Welcome to the program and we start with breaking news. It's just been announced that Professor Stephen Hawking has died at the age of 76. He was well known for his groundbreaking work with black holes and with relativity. And he was also the author of several popular science books, including A Brief History of Time. As a young man, he was stricken with a form of motor neurone disease. Nick Hyam looks back on his remarkable life. He was instantly recognizable and utterly remarkable. The visionary scientist, helpless in his high-tech wheelchair, who nonetheless transformed our view of the universe. While a student, he developed the first signs of motor neurone disease. Gradually, his body shut down till he could communicate only using a computerized voice synthesizer, controlled to start with by hand. It didn't hold him back. I was never actually told that I had only two years to live, but I could see the doctors didn't think my prospects were good. His fame sprang from his book, A Brief History of Time. It sold 10 million copies, but though many bought it, rather fewer actually read it. His theories about time, space and black holes were stupendously difficult for non-specialists to grasp, but he turned out to have a genius for communication. He gave lectures and interviews and became an unlikely celebrity. He even appeared in The Simpsons. I don't like your tone. If you are looking for trouble, you found it. Yeah, just try me, you... Oh! The, the public loves to have celebrities who aren't, you know, the run-of-the-mill, you know, Posh and Becks kind of celebrities. And, and so when you have someone who actually has a significant intellectual accomplishment who becomes famous, you know, people like me go, oh, that's great. I wish there were more of them. And on an episode of Star Trek, he played poker with Isaac Newton, his predecessor as Lucasian professor of mathematics at Cambridge. The day that apple fell on my head was the most momentous day in the history of science. Not the apple story again. He'd become a byword for cleverness, an unlikely intellectual pinup. He, he fills that, that sort of place we need for a symbol of brain power. You know, if you go into a student's room these days, instead of seeing John Lennon or Jimi Hendrix or Che Guevara, except in a retro sense, you often see Oscar Wilde, Albert Einstein, Stephen Hawking. Cause, because these days, I think we, people who like to identify themselves with being on the side of the mind Think of him as, as, as a pure symbol of that, a pure brain. His private life was complicated. With his first wife, Jane, he had three children, and she looked after him, until in 1990 he left her for his nurse, Elaine. They eventually married, only for claims to emerge that Hawking had been physically abused. Police investigated, but the case was dropped for lack of evidence. The couple later divorced. Too often they are told that these are stupid questions to ask. But this is said by grown-ups who don't know the answers and don't want to look silly by admitting they don't know. He never lost his sense of humour, though by the end he could only speak by twitching his cheek to move an infrared beam. I don't have much positive to say about motor neuron disease, but it taught me not to pity myself and to get on with what I still could do. I am happier now than before I developed the condition. If general relativity is correct, then yes. the universe is expanding, yes? Yes. OK, so if you reverse time, then the universe is getting smaller. All right. In 2014, his life was Wasn't dramatized it? in the theory I of everything, with Eddie Redmayne playing Hawking. To see what happened at the beginning of time itself. Stephen, here you are. <laughs> at Cambridge, they unveiled a statue of him, a rare honor for someone still living. But few did more to transform our understanding of the universe and to overcome personal challenges. And uh, there's a statement which has been released by Professor Stephen Hawking's family. It says that we are deeply saddened that our beloved father passed away today. It says he was a great scientist and an extraordinary man whose work and legacy will live on for many years. It does go on to say that his courage and persistence with his brilliance and humor inspired people across the world. And then they go on to quote him, it says, he once said, it would not be much of a universe if it wasn't home to the people you love. And it concludes, we will miss him forever. Professor Stephen Hawking, who has died at the age of 76.